guys, I am here with a Bible reading. I hope you're having a good day. Today we'll be reading in the New International Version, and we'll be reading Hebrews chapter 6, Psalm 105, verses 16 through 36, and Proverbs chapter 27, verses 1 and 2. Okay, so let me get down there. Okay. The certainty of God's promise. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about cleansing rites, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment, and God permitting, we will do so. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. To their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. Do you, would you want to be responsible for that? Mm -mm, not me. Land that drinks in the rain, often falling on it, and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is farmed, receives the blessing of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. Just like, you know, the bad people, the people that are not in Christ. They will be burned. They'll be in hell for eternity. You cannot get out. Even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are convinced of better things in your case. The things that have to do with salvation. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you my descendants. And so after, waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. People swear by someone greater than themselves. And an oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. You'll hear a lot of people when they want to, you know, convince somebody of something, they'll say, I swear to God. For, you know, it's an example. Or they'll, I don't agree with this. They'll say, you're not supposed to swear by anything. But they'll, I've also heard people say, I swear on my child's grave. Or I swear on my parent's grave. Or by, you know, whatever. Somebody's grave. And I think that's awful. I think that's awful. But that's me. I don't, I don't like it. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, it is impossible for God to lie, because he's all good. Good doesn't lie. We who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain, where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of who, guys? We read about that yesterday. In the order of Melchizedek. Amen. Okay, good job, guys. And that's where we're stopping with Hebrews 6. And now we're continuing on with Psalm 105 from yesterday with verses 16 through 36. 
He called down the famine on the land and destroyed all their supplies of food. And he sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. They bruised his feet with shackles. His neck was put in irons. To what he foretold came to pass. To the word of the Lord proved him true. The king sent and released him. The ruler of people set him free. He made him master of his household, ruler over all he possessed, to instruct his princes as he pleased and teach his elders wisdom. Then Israel entered Egypt. Jacob resided as a foreigner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people very fruitful. He made them too numerous for their foes, whose hearts he turned to hate them, who turned to hate his people, to conspire against his servants. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen, Moses' brother. They performed his signs among them, his wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made the land dark. For had they not rebelled against his words, he turned their waters into blood, causing their fish to die. Their land teemed with frogs, which went up into the bedrooms of their rulers. He spoke, and there came swarms of flies and gnats throughout their country. He turned their rain into hell with lightning throughout their land. He struck down their vines and fig trees and scattered the trees of their country. He spoke and the locusts came. Have you ever heard locusts? And this would have been a lot of locusts. If you even got a few locusts outside your window or close, they're so loud. You cannot sleep. They're loud. He spoke and the locusts came, grasshoppers without number. They ate up every green thing in the land ate up the produce of their soil. Then he struck down all the firstborn in their land, the first fruit of all their manhood, animals and people alike. All right, guys, so that's where we're stopping with Psalm 105. And ending today's Bible reading is Proverbs chapter 27, verses 1 and 2. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Let someone else praise you and not your own mouth, an outsider and not your own lips. All right, guys, that was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your hearts. I'm going to go get it uploaded and then I'm going to get started on our Bible study. Bye, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus.